Frederick Winslow Taylor, the father of scientific management, was born on March 20, 1865, into an upper-class liberal Philadelphia family. His father, a Princeton graduate and lawyer, made enough money for mortgages and did not have to keep a regular job. His mother was a spirited abolitionist and feminist who was said to have run an underground railroad station for runaway slaves. Both parents were Quakers and believed in high thinking and plain living. Parental authority was not questioned, and children were seen and not heard in the Taylor family. Family members referred to each other as thee and thou. At an early age, Taylor learned self-control, and his Quaker upbringing helped him avoid conflicts with his peers and to resolve disagreements among them. Taylor was a compulsive adolescent and was always counting and measuring things to find a better way of doing something. At age 12, he invented a harness for himself to keep from sleeping on his back, hoping to avoid the nightmares that he had been having. Educated early by his mother, Taylor studied for two years in France and Germany and traveled Europe for 18 months. In 1872, he entered Phillips Exeter Academy in Exeter, New Hampshire. Upon graduation, Taylor was accepted at Harvard Law School. However, due to rapidly deteriorating eyesight, he had to consider an alternative career. At age 25, Taylor earned an engineering degree at the Stevens Institute of Technology in New Jersey while holding a full-time job. To date, no one has broken that record. Another of his achievements was his winning at the U.S. Lawn Tennis Association Doubles Championship, frontrunner to the now U.S. Open, where he used a patented spoon-shaped racket that he himself designed. Even though he excelled in math and sports and had a degree from an exclusive college, Frederick chose to work as a machinist and pattern maker in Philadelphia at the Enterprise Hydraulic Work. While working there, he introduced pieces of work in the factory. His goal was to find the most efficient way to perform specific tasks. He closely watched how work was done and would then measure the quantity produced. On May 3, 1884, he married Louis M. Spooner of Philadelphia. From 1890 until 1893, Taylor worked as general manager and consulting engineer to management for the Manufacturing Investment Company of Philadelphia, a company that operated large paper mills in Maine and Wisconsin. He spent time as plant manager in Maine. In 1893, Taylor opened an independent consulting practice in Philadelphia. His business card read, Systemizing Shop Management and Manufacturing Costs a Specialty. In 1898, Taylor joined Bethlehem Steel, where he, Monsell White, and a team of assistants developed high-speed steel. For his process of treating high-speed stills, he received a personal gold medal at the Paris Exposition in 1900 and was awarded the Elliott Crescent Medal that same year by the Franklin Institute, Philadelphia. Taylor was forced to leave Bethlehem Still in 1901 after antagonisms with other managers. In 1901, Frederick and Louise Taylor adopted three orphans, Kempton, Robert, and Elizabeth. On October 19, 1906, Taylor was awarded an honorary degree of Doctor of Science by the University of Pennsylvania. Taylor eventually became a professor at the Tuck School of Business at Dartmouth College. Late winter of 1915, Taylor caught pneumonia, and one day after his 59th birthday, on March 21, 1950, he died. He was buried in West Laurel Hill Cemetery in Baylor, Kennard, Pennsylvania. Contributions Scientific Management Taylor developed a science for each element of a man's work, meaning he evaluated how an individual performed each piece of his job. For example, he spent hours evaluating how coal shovels shoveled coal. He then worked to replace the old methods of performing a job with a more effective and efficient way of performing the task. Taylor truly believed in the idea of one best way to complete a task. This is what we call business redesign today, a common practice in both public and private sectors. It holds individual employees accountable for what they do and invites them to be more effective with shareholders' or taxpayers' money. He also developed the scientific selection of employees. This was the beginning of training development of workers instead of allowing them to choose their own tasks and train themselves as best they could. This training development was the beginning of human resources in the private sector, which has now translated to the public sector where employees are now being hired for their ability to learn and perform, rather than for what they know already. Incentives. Taylor advocated paying the person and not the job, and believed that unions would be unnecessary if workers were paid their individual worth. 
Taylor doubled productivity at Midvale by following this philosophy. This philosophy is based on underlying assumptions, which are still used and somewhat believed, especially within the public se sector. First, if there is the presence of a capitalist system and a money economy where companies in a free market system have at their main objective the improvement of efficiency and the mac maximization of profit, then there is a higher incentive for better performance. In layman's terms, this means that companies exist to make money, or so it is in their best interest to be efficient and make more money. Or in the public sector, it is the government, in the government's best interest to use taxpayers' money efficiently and maximize the gain to society. The idea of becoming more efficient by using other techniques is known as benchmarking. Although the term wasn't introduced until the 1950s, Taylor had been using the idea since the late 1800s. Taylor, with this idea of incentives, assumes that people will work hard and behave rationally to maximize their own income, meaning it is an individual's best interest to serve the organization's goals before their own personal goals, and will therefore maximize their own income and job security. The ideas of motiv motivation, management, and organization are all well before Taylor's time. These ideas are currently used within the public and private sectors, and can be traced back to Taylor and his writings. Most of these ideas can be found within Taylor's books titled Principles. Frederick Winslow Taylor on National Efficiency President Roosevelt, in his address to the governors at the White House, remarked that the conservation of our national resources is only preliminary to the larger questions of national efficiency. Frederick Winslow Taylor responded in 1911, We can see our forests vanishing, our water powers going to waste, our soil being carried by floods into the sea, and in the end uh, of sight is our coal and iron supply, but our larger wastes of human effort, which go on every day through such of our acts as are blundering, ill-directed, or inefficient, and which Mr. Roosevelt refers to as lack of national efficiency, are less visible, less tangible, but are vaguely appreciated. A new profession. Taylor began management consulting. Taylor introduced the idea of, con of contracting and consulting. He truly believed that if someone could do something more effective or efficient, then either copy their system or let them do it for you. This idea would get him in trouble with many at the time, because the public felt Taylor was cutting out useful jobs, when he was actually making jobs more useful. Some of Taylor's accomplishments as a consultant include creating a real-time analysis of daily output and costs, a modern cost accounting system. He reduced yard works ranks from 500 to 140. He doubled stamping mill production and lowered costs per ton of materials handled from 8 cents to 4 cents. Although many at the time disagreed with his consulting methods, Taylor was effective and made significant increases to the bottom line for many organizations. This type of consulting would open the door for companies such as Deloitte, Booz Allen, Bain, and McKinsey. Taylor introduced the origin of quality management long before Deming had studied the idea. We owe Fre Frederick Taylor our gratitude for pioneering the beginning of effectiveness, allowing private and public agencies and sectors to perform a more effective work than could have ever been performed.